August 21st, uh, tonight. Uh, first case we have on the agenda for tonight is case number 1415. I'll go ahead and read the uh, legal notice and we'll proceed from there. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at the Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, August 21st, 2014, at 7 p.m. on the petition of Victor J. Silva, who seeks a variance and or a special permit under sections 5.1.2, 5.2.3, 5.3.4, Six point three point eight of the zoning bylaws, in order to remove an existing non-conforming detached garage, and to construct a new non-conforming garage, located three point two feet from the property line, on the property located at one sixty six Wuben Street, in Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before the board is taken under oath. So if you think you may want to speak tonight, please stand and raise your right hand and we'll administer the oath. Is the petitioner here, Mr. Silva? Yes. Yeah, okay, you, you sh should probably, yep, rise, take the oath. <laughs> Not, it doesn't hurt, believe me. Uh, I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole <laughs> truth, nothing but the truth. Response is I do. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, Floor is yours then if you'd like to uh, make a presentation uh, of what you uh, are uh, asking for. Joining on one side is, is just slightly off and to remain conforming. The fence on the back is perfectly fine and can be going uh, extended by the three feet or whatever it was initially proposed to make it functional as a real garage. And our property is um, right next to St. Adam's Street Gym. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, we, we may. Okay. We, I'll, okay. We'll go around sure. and uh, okay. ask the members on that. But if, okay. if you feel that's uh, pretty much what you want to explain to us, that'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, I'll start with David on this one. David, uh, do you have any questions on this petition? Um, <coughs> would you like us, if you know whether or not you would know the the difference of whether you'd like us to grant a special permit or a variance. We, we thought so much of the special permit right. just okay. because it gives the existing structure the same roof closer to Aya than it is from the neighbor's side. So the old one is three feet and this one is going to be three point two. So that's why we thought it fell under the special permit. And it's basically side that's kind of like almost a natural fence by itself because there's really no function on that side of, of the building. So it's a nice permit to see even as the lab admitted that the visit does provide the neighbors and does provide the privacy uh, between the two lives. So the proposed addition <coughs> is Increasing or decreasing the existing non-conformity? It's, it's lengthening on the back side, on the conforming side. But, that, but it's decreasing. So on the non-conforming side, it's decreasing. But on the, we're extending it back to the church parking lot, mm -hmm. but there's sufficient 
that falls within the boundary, yeah. but it's on the neighbor's side. It's three feet now, and then the new garage is going to be 3.2. And that remains aligned with the current driveway. Going to the back lot line, Correct. it still meets with the, what is it, the five yard, five yard setback from the I back see. lot, five, 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 five foot. foot. I, I should have, I was a bit remiss, five maybe I should line. ask Glenn, is uh, is five feet the uh, setback in this yes. particular yes. case, five, Glenn? Five foot from on the rear, five foot from the side. Side, on both, yeah. okay. And, and yeah, so, five yeah. Feet. And so the existing so, and then Well, all right, let me. Yeah, go ahead. Let's let's let yeah. Glenn yeah. Okay, give us a. If if the accessory building was located behind the house, it would be a five foot setback requirement. But this this particular um, garage is not located behind the house, so therefore it will be a ten foot setback, a side setback. It's a corner lot. <coughs> corner lot. It that has. But it's it's also. Uh, all right, so what's, so what's the address? Wolven, Wolven Street. Wolven Street. Yeah. Okay. So okay, so it's fine. House. Five foot would be fine. Yeah, so that's so what it, 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 it looks it like. Be behind yeah. the house. Yeah. It's behind the house, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we're look, looking at it this way. Yes, correct. And, and so then, so <coughs> that would be the, and essentially that would then be a, a side yard. Exactly. A side yard setback. It would be encroaching into the side yard setback, 5.2 feet at the, at the, the top. The address is, it would be, be encroaching into the rear yard setback. So yeah. it'd be, it would be encroaching into the rear yard setback, yeah. which but the, 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 on the, the, street side. the existing nonconformity is three feet, and the proposed new structure would then be 3.2 feet. Correct. Okay. So it would be essentially decreasing the nonconformity by 0.2 feet. Do we, do you, do you agree with that, Glenn? Yes. I just wanted a clarification sure. with that, so I'm, okay. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Kathleen? Um, just for one question, it looks to be, is the garage home is obviously bigger than what's there now? On the back side. On the back side. Right. And how about height-wise? Is it going to be? It's going to be basically the same height. So they're the same. Right. The, the structure that's there now is mm -hmm. it's it's like a barn and it's being replaced by a Jamdrell style of the same height. So it's going to look similar in yes, look and exactly. same height. Okay. Okay. John? Um, <coughs> when you were considering this, I assume you came in and saw Glenn mm -hmm. and he told you what you needed to do. If you were to move that garage from 3.2 feet, the proposed garage from 3.2 feet to 5 feet, which is 1 foot, one foot nine, 9 and a half inches, you would move that away from the back lot line. 1 foot 9 and a half inches. It would misalign with the current driveway asphalt, which is like it goes. It, it goes straight most of the way and then expands, right? And, and currently, when I had the driveway installed a number of years ago, it was aligned with the, the current uh, garage. And currently, in the back, it's going to not even sit as church, yeah. the gym. So mm -hmm. it's it just really, uh, people just are using that area right now for parking on the side. So we're not really going into sort of a residential backyard for the back side. One side is commercial, the other one is, is residential. So the adjoining property is um, is on the short side. Right. So it would be basically in alignment as to what it is now minus that 3.2 or, or 3 feet. Um, but the back would be extended by feet or something so that you could actually use it as a vehicle. And then we wouldn't have to go through the expense of getting a garage, I mean the driveway to be placed in everything. 
and it's, it's not really impeding on, I mean, I don't think um, the church minds that we're going back. Well, technically, I think the law, I think the guideline says we can go back. Um, we're still within the guideline of the five, five feet because it's going to go back 5.2 feet away on from the, um, the gymnasium. And that's the shortest side because it's still, the lot is not exactly square. So therefore, one side is actually five plus feet. The other side is six, probably six feet or so. Yes, I understand. Um, what I understand moving closer to the um, to St. Agnes's Church um, yeah. to meet the five point two on the um, southern southerly side, I guess. Um, yeah. uh, no, westerly side, um, and six point four feet from from the other side. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I, I guess what I'm having difficulty trying to understand, you are so close, asphalt is so cheap. Oh, and, but that's not the only issue. We have, we have a beautiful, massive tree in the area that's a copper. It's not even part of this discussion. And we don't want to move it closer to the tree because it's like a 300 plus year old tree in Copper Beach and like 16 foot circumference. And this is gonna be, I don't wanna move it any closer to that tree as one example. I'd rather leave it where it is and not have affect the roots of the tree. As I guess I, 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 didn't, I didn't notice the tree <laughs> when I was well, looking at it. So I, I guess I just didn't, uh, I know that the uh, Rule of thumb is whatever the crown of the uh, the branches of the tree determines yeah. where the roots are. And and we asked about you know the potentials and they don't think there's an issue redoing it, resituating it as where it is. But um, in the back of my mind, I'm still a little bit hesitant. But it's it's perfectly fine where it is. Moving it closer would would make me a little bit more worried. I'd rather just keep the structure basically where it is and just have it lengthened in the back where it's still not going to be, uh, you know, have an effect on the tree. And I think the neighbor kind of likes it where it is because if you move, move it closer to our house, it's like then our yard is kind of, I mean, it, it, if you tell us we have to move it over, we're going to move it over, but then we, we're going to use that side of our yard. Right now, we're not using that side of the yard. So the neighbor has uh, more, a little bit more yard space and for privacy. Like, privacy. But if, if, if you, you tell us you better move the garage, well, then, I mean, we feel like we're going to use, utilize that side of the yard. Yeah, but you're only going to point two feet. Yeah, but it's three feet now, you're going point right. two, which it, is yeah. Yeah. what. Um, so, so we're not going to use it. So basically, that yard. Kind of, so basically, then it's, it's like not it's very useful. To us. It's not useful to us. But if you make us go further, if you make us go five feet, then it, it's almost like well, or you're taking a little bit, like another two feet of our yard here. That's a, that's enough for us to do something with like plants or like a vegetable garden on the other side. But then that doesn't provide privacy to the, the neighbor, whereas the barn where it is does provide some privacy and then they don't have to worry about putting up a fence or anything. Well, you're asking for <coughs> either one of two reliefs. One is a variance and one is a special permit. Yeah, whichever but one is The easiest. variance is going to be extremely yeah. difficult then to prove. Um, well, so what, like what, did, what, what are you saying is the variance and what are you saying is a special permit? I mean, it seems to like which the special permit is the easiest, the right. simplest route to go through. John, if I were, it, it, when I reviewed it, I looked at the notes here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe you're eligible for a special permit under 63.1.C. 
if I'm not mistaken, it says that the uh, after the demolition of the existing garage, the new garage must be built in the same footprint of the old garage, or else it's not eligible for a special permit. And it's obviously not in the same footprint as the existing garage. That's the way I, I read it. Well, I guess when we went up to Glenn and we were getting his help, it's like sure. and, and also the person who did the pot plan, who's more familiar with some of the bylaws, they were telling us it would fall under a special permit. Right. Okay. Yeah. What section are you looking at? Uh, I had it noted 6.3.8.1. Section subsection C, and it talks about a detached, accessory detached accessory structure, and it should be built with. It doesn't say within, but in the footprint. So I think it could be smaller. But it, it should be in the footprint of the uh, existing structure, if it were to be eligible for a special permit. That's the way I read, Glenn. I think if you read um, if you read paragraph C, it, says it doesn't mention anything about the special permit in this section. Right, it says a detached accessory structure, which is accessory to a single family, a two family dwelling that has non conforming setbacks, may be demolished, and a new accessory may be built in the same footprint, provided that the new structure does not exceed. So I, if, it's, if it's within the same footprint, it can be built by right. Okay. No special permit. I think B, B, paragraph B makes makes a special permit available. I th it's a, it's a little confusing. That's why yeah. I mentioned variance and or a special permit. Hmm. I think that's a by. I think sec I think section C is a by right. So by right, if you build that's it within the, the footprint. So, okay. so this this proposal is not within the report footprints. So they don't really qualify for C by right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Now, we're, uh, now I think we're back B. into B. In the event that the proposed oh. construction causes the structure to exceed the volume of area, which it does, mm -hmm. or cause the structure to be located other than the original fo footprint, a special permit shall be required from the Board of Appeals prior, prior to such demolition. Well, and there's, there's, there's a little bit of discrepancy, not that it yeah. necessarily Okay, if, if that's the way that it's uh, but, uh, that's typically you've been interpreting these, yeah. Yeah, that's the way okay. I'm reading it, but it is difficult. Sure. That's why I, that's why I added the um, the variance section sure. in case we could go either way without having to do another whole yeah. another no meeting. Well, uh, okay, well, uh, I guess we can discuss that as yes. board members. <coughs> how we feel comfortable with this? Uh, is the special permit comfortable, or do you feel we need the uh, you know the variance? I think a variance would be would be difficult. What for? for I think it would be too. As a matter of clarification, again, not that it helps or hinders, but while the posting asks for relief under three sections of the zoning yeah, bylaw, the application that was applied for that accompanied the package also asks for relief under 6332. Right. Um, it, while it wasn't c contained in the, in the public notice, mm -hmm. um, it was in the application, so I think we also probably have an obligation to consider the application under that section as well. I think it would be in our discretion to make that determination. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I would I would tend to agree with you, David. I think I think six three three two could be applicable in this case, and, and it was uh, contained in the handwritten application form. Sure. It just never made it into the uh, posting. Okay. John, are you? Uh, no, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pass for now. Okay, you're going to pass. Sai, questions? Well, I think it's. Uh, in reading through the package, I think that there was probably some kind of an understanding that a variance probably wasn't required on this, okay? Uh, I mean, I think if, uh, 
I was looking at paragraph 5236. And if, and, and if I looked at that one, I could come to the conclusion that a variance would not be required. I don't know whether anyone else sees it that way or not. Okay. I think definitely a permit is required for 6381B and probably the 6332. Well, and I just was going mm -hmm. over that with Glenn a little bit too, just pointing back and forth. And they seem, in my estimation, to meet the two requirements in 5236 anyway. Right. Right. So I don't think they would, I think you're correct in that. So they I would draw the conclusion from that, from that if I feel that applies, that a variance is not required. Would, no, they're in conformity with that they're section. In conformity with that's that. your right. Mm. right. So Opinion. From my standpoint, my perspective, I would say that we're talking about a special permit here, probably not a variance, at least from my viewpoint. I don't have anything else to add at this point. I think we're, I think we're mm -hmm. leaning towards agreeing with that. I, I, I would tend to agree that, uh, you know, myself, the special the permit would be the, the, the route to go. I think it would be difficult to variance. Uh, five, two, three, uh, is six. Generally very difficult to get uh, on that. Yeah, I uh, think if I think if they were looking for a variance, I think they'd be have a great yeah. deal of difficulty getting an affirmative response to that here. Mm -hmm. I really would. So. And uh, we're looking at it. Th that that was my re uh, thoughts too, as, as John had said. What why why couldn't the garage be shifted the 1.8 feet? to the, uh, it would be in the northerly direction there to uh, get that five foot setback from, from the rear. And you're saying there is a... Uh, yeah, but, but we have the five foot setback. Right. No, no. no. Oh, but the rear, are you referring to the rear side? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm looking at Wuben Street as the ad Sorry. address. Okay. Wuben Street as the address, and that's the way I think uh, we, the town would be looking at it, right. is that the garage is in the backyard section. And it's more of the neighbor, the neighbor's Yeah, house. even though you have access off of uh, Wenda Street, yes. Right. Exactly. I, th I think the bottom line is they, you know, they could, they could do that. They could even pull it back from the, from the side to something else too. They got a lot of yeah, room to do that. But okay? Well, they're but, five but feet. But to me, you're not, even what you're doing, you're not creating a new nonconformity here. No. Okay. No, you're making it better. Right. Well, that's, better. Why like, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like. That's why I liked David bringing up the uh, fact there that they made reference in their application to six three three two, and that is in particular in this case when it says there is no new nonconformity, mm -hmm. and in fact, it will be. It, it won't increase the, the the impact to the neighborhood. Uh, it'll be less. It won't be any more detrimental to the neighborhood than what's there now. I, I, you know, I like that aspect of it. Uh, okay. Uh, any other comments on this? Uh, and if not, I'll open it to public hearing. Okay, I'll open uh, this case up to uh, public comment. Is there anybody here from the public who would like to comment on this? Uh, see, hearing none, I will close the public portion of, uh, uh, of the meeting or of this uh, case. And uh, is there any further questions by board members? Well, the only question for the service would be, <coughs> are we going to um, look for relief on the 6332, um, which seems to be more appropriate? Or go on, go on to six three eighty one B. Yeah, it, it's personally I I like six three three two uh, mm -hmm. on that uh, rather than the one uh, B. I, I, as I say, I, I could see Glenn's interpretation of one B noting that it's detached, and then you refer back uh, to to the other ones. Uh, and I know that's the way he's been interpreting these days. Uh, so I could go either way, but I like 6332. How do you feel about that, Glenn? I, I, I think it could go either way. Either way. But it's, I, one of the 638 is voluntary demolition and 
Right. And reconstruction, and that's what we're doing. We're right. Doing it, and we're going to reconstruct it. Right. Well, and just as a matter of practice, where the legal notice posted doesn't mention 6332? Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's within the board's discretion if they want to. I think the I think alternative is. relief where it's all where it's been requested in the application. Right. We're not too far out. Yeah. If we if I mean we could reference both. Uh, I, I was just gonna say uh, we, uh, and cover we could all issue our a special yes. permit referencing both sections mm -hmm. and note that it is uh, uh, no new non conformity. Well, in fact it would be less of a non conformity. Right. And number two, there is, uh, it is not increasing any uh, uh, impact to the neighborhood at all. Right, the substantially and detrimental that, analysis. Right, substantially right. detrimental. And uh, I like that idea, referencing mm -hmm. both sections. Mm -hmm. And then would we also need to make a ruling on the application for a variance as well? Uh, I, think, I think since they've asked for it, we need to. I, I, I don't know, it says and or, so to me, we give it, it's a special permit, and I don't think we've used before what like withdraw the request for a variance. After after the special permit, after we've, we've we can do it. that. I mean, we've done it before, yeah. but we can do that. Certainly. I, I mean, I'll leave it up to the chair. Okay. To, you, you know, your yeah. call, Paul. Well, we, we can do that. We we can do that. Withdraw the request. It's just a formality, and we'll note that in the decision when we when it's written up. That'll be fine. Uh, any further questions? We'll, so it sounds like that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll, I'm looking for a motion uh, for a special mm -hmm. permit. The, the application yes. was just specifically a request for a special permit. Right. I, I advertised it as, I, I added the veterans portion of the yeah. article. Mm -hmm. I'm the one. <laughs> <laughs> well, as usual. Cover all bases. <laughs> as usual. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's his fault. But it was advertised that way. And Make a motion. Okay, David. Uh, I move that the board approve the petition of applicant Victor J. Silva for a special permit under section 6381B and 6332 of the zoning bylaw in order to remove a, an existing non-conforming detached garage and to construct a new non-conforming garage, detached garage, located 3.2 feet from the rear yard property line located on the property located at 166 Woburn Street, Reading, Massachusetts. Okay. In, so accor add accordance to in accordance. In uh, accordance. Right. Well, yeah. We'll reference the. We'll reference the. Uh, okay, plot plan, uh, showing the proposed. Uh, garage. Prepared by John D. Sullivan the third, of twenty two Mount Vernon Road, Boxford, Mass. Dated June twenty one two thousand fourteen, and stamped by John Sullivan. Uh, John D. Sullivan the third uh, should we add the normal special permit conditions to this uh, it's a de it's a demolition so they'll they'll probably need to are you gonna need to put a new you're gonna need to put a new foundation, foundation in yeah, yeah so we probably we probably should so apply. probably the probably. first two conditions okay. apply okay do you, issue, do you issue an occupancy permit on a, on a detached garage? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we should all three. Yeah, we, yeah we'll, we'll, put, we'll, we'll add them all. Okay. Might as well have them, and, and, and if you don't need them, at least they're there if you do need them. There you go. Uh, uh, the uh, special permit will be conditioned upon the following conditions. Uh, petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Second, the petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as-built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit. And finally, the petitioner shall submit as-built plans to the building inspector showing the completed construction immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. 
so moved. There were several other drawings that were included in this package too. So do we want to in those as well? And they were yeah, were they what elevation drawings? Kind of uh, no, archi architectural renderings. There were five I sheets see. with all each with a different name. Uh, I think more right, let's five. see. Huh? Oh, we got a foundation, floor, floor, Well, there were more than five. There were several yeah, attached to sheet five. Foundation five. plan, floor joyce plan, second yeah, floor yeah, plan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> section yeah. A of the garage, uh, raftering and, and uh, I don't roof don't plans. So. Uh, do we want to reference those? Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's something I think Glenn could probably you want me to handle. Do you think those should be referenced in the special permit plan? Um, well, these are the plans submitted yeah. with the application. Well, uh, I so I guess maybe we should reference maybe the plans submitted with the application. Yeah, in yeah. general conformance with the plans, the architectural yeah. plans. And in conformance <laughs> with the <laughs> architectural <laughs> plans submitted with the petitioner's application. Whatever. <laughs> so moved. Second. Thank you. I have a second. Any further questions? All those in favor of the motion? Pass 500. You get your special permit. Uh, we have 14 days to write up that decision. Uh, that'll be submitted to the clerk and logged in. And then uh, there is a 20-day appeal period. After that, uh, it has to be registered uh, at the Registry of Deeds, that decision. And then you'll be able to get your building permit then. Yep. Uh, we can, let's see, I have some documentation for you tonight. Yes, I'll stamp something. Uh, can I uh, have your hand? You Mine's it? marked up. You can have it. So if yours is not marked up, shush I. Oh, we're all set here. We, we have. <laughs> yeah, we have. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, that's the. We don't need this one. This is the that's existing. the. That's the existing one. I don't need that. All right, we have these. Okay, if you wait a minute, I'll, let me stamp these in and you'll have what we approved tonight and then you can have that for your record. And make sure that I get them here. Copies for you. Thank you. And uh, as I say, we'll get that decision written up here within the next two weeks. Thank you.
finish up some paperwork here. Next case we have in the agenda tonight is case number uh, 1416, and the petition is here. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, let me read the uh, legal notice and we'll proceed from there. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at the Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, August 21st, 2014, at 7 p.m. on the petition of Robert and Denise Eaton, who seek a variance under sections 5.0 and 5.1.2 of the zoning bylaws in order to add an eight by eight front entryway located 14.7 feet from the front lot line rather than the 20 feet required on the property located at 15 Parkview Road in Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, members and associate members of the boards of Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may want to speak tonight, please stand and raise your right hand. You'll be sworn in. Okay. Uh, I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Responses I do. Thank you. The floor is yours. If you'd like to make a presentation. So we were looking to um, box it in, so as I call it box in, but close in the entryway because it's a split entry. And looking at our, our, our retirement golden years, <laughs> the entry right now is not handicap accessible because when you, if you know what an, an a split is, you open the door and you have to move and step back and the stairs go down before they go up. And if you have a walker, and we've tried this because we have in-laws now that are becoming handicapped, and you can't, it's not accessible. So looking at if you're gonna replace the existing entryway, 
that if we may be entrance, open it up so we have accessibility to use a make it handicap accessible in the future is the, is the prime reason why. And we are looking to retire, so we're trying to make the house so that it can we can live here as long as we can. When? Not to say the exit the proposed garage uh, that permit has been issued okay so um, I don't know if it's under I don't think we've done any inspections out there yet but the, the permit has been granted for for that the the front uh, entryway is actually in addition to the house and it was denied because it because of the 14.7 proposed setback so I mean, just it's just uh, doesn't meet the dimensional controls so I nothing else I can do Okay, thank you. Uh, why don't I, uh, I'll start with you. Excuse me, I'll start with Cy this time. And uh, any uh, comments on this, Cy? Or? Well, I think the argument you put forth for a variance, at least from the standpoint of the, the hardship issue, is, is a weak one at the moment, okay? I know you talk about you want to make this thing handicap accessible, but basically what you're doing is covering up the front walkway. The stairs are not changing, is that correct? Well, the, platform. the platform is being, is, is being covered. The existing platform. Right. We know that it's, it's not, you know, you, you have to probably put a foundation in. Right. And, the, yeah. and it will be, right now we have like three steps up. It's only going to be one step up. Yeah. But, I, but what I'm having trouble with is when you, when, you, when you basically apply for a variance and you're using it as your explanation for hardship that it, it, it helps make it handicap accessible, more handicap accessible. You're just putting, just covering up that, that entryway, in my view, doesn't make it more handicap accessible, okay? You've well, still got steps to deal with and I don't know what the handicap issue is that you're well, potentially you dealing with, all right? <coughs> space to be able to put special railings or you know, mm -hmm. all of that, yet mm -hmm. right now we wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, are you planning to put railings in there too? Uh, are there railings there now, right? Or are there? There's railings on the concrete, that will come off, yeah, because it won't right. be railings as far as inside going up. So you're basically replacing the whole foundation too? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I don't have any other questions at the moment. Okay, John? <coughs> Well, I looked at the, uh, I guess I looked at the garage, and the garage is 38 feet long by 24 feet wide. Um, if you were concerned about um, handicap accessible, I would think um, that that, should, that could be taken care of by going into the garage and gaining access in the bad weather to the house directly upon moving into the garage. Um, that's, I'm just making these observations. Mm -hmm. uh, my second observation was um, with the um, architectural drawing um, that came with the package, um, it appears that, although I don't see any dimensions, it appears that the front entryway is, go excuse me, is going to be moved out beyond um, the exterior of the walls of the house right now, which are basically 15 feet from the, from the front, I mean, I'm sorry, 20 feet from the front uh, log line. I don't know, I mean, to me, I don't, I don't see any dimensions to, to tell me how much of a variance you need. Uh, it's more than just, it appears to be more than just covering of the platform that exists right now. But again, I don't, I don't see any dimensions or anything else. So that's a, that's a extent. On the back side. Yeah, the plus one, right? Yeah. The plus plan as well. Yeah, I, I saw the, uh, the plot plan, the eight feet by eight feet. Um, I understand that. Then I look at the architectural drawing. Um, we're not look, looking just for a cover, uh, which was more or less discussed. Um, 
it's, you're looking it's, it's not a cut. This, this is a proposed new structure it's, it's with a new room. foundation. Yeah. It's, 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 room it's just going in the proximate area of the existing platform. Yeah. Existing platform. It's not going to go any bigger than the existing platform now. It's already there. It's already there. So it's already. But it's going on a new. It's going on a new foundation. Okay. Then I go for my next observation. And I don't think that the ADA regulations um, address um, which came first, zoning or handicap accessible access. Um, I think if there is access and the stairs are still there, you haven't done anything about ADA regulations about gaining proper access to your home from handicap accessibility. And if you're moving from the street you've got the steps in front of the house at the same time. So the garage becomes integral to handicap access. Um, so my, I guess my difficulty is where the handicap accessibility comes into this whole thing, even though it's part of the description, um, as Sai had mentioned, I think it's a, a little bit on the weak side um, for a variance. So, if the ADA regulations don't trump, which I think they do, um, zoning regulations, um, the question then becomes um, where are we providing it on the house itself? Where's the ramps, the whole ramp assembly that you're asking for? Or are we going through some other? The idea is My mother, who was in a nurse, uh, assisted living, she can't even come to visit us because she can't get her walker into the into the uh, house and move it around. When you open the door to our house, the stairs are right there. You can't, there's no maneuverability. We're trying to open it up to make more maneuverability in the, in the entryway. Mm -hmm. The handicap Accessibility is more for, like if we were going to build a ramp, that would come later. Not, not at this time. It's, it's to make it so that we can planning, put one in. Planning ahead. Planning ahead for, for the future so we could live there for as long as we possibly can. Well then, to me, it, it then goes back to the zoning regulations and what are they? Are we meeting the, f the four criteria for granting a variance? And I'm thinking that uh, I looked at the rest of the neighborhood, and there are, I mean, you're not unique. There's four other, at least four other homes, especially on that side of the, the street, that sit up and have that same issue, which is probably, I didn't, you know, by sight, I couldn't measure the distance. Some of them seem to be back a little further than what your house is. Um, so I, I'm thinking that the variance is, is, is going to be difficult to prove in my mind. Um, but the whole idea of granting, um, by right, certainly the garage, by right, mm -hmm. um, you can, because the only way, you, I mean, you don't drop your mother-in-law at the front stairs and tell her to walk up the stairs and then walk up the stairs to the platform and then into the house, do you? Yeah, no, you drive up to the driveway and she walks along that yeah. side there. Yeah. But you've also now putting a 38 foot long by 24 foot wide garage there. I mean, if it was my mother, I'd drop her off in the garage so that she, I assume that there's a way to get from the garage into the house mm -hmm. or there's That's going to be. So this is a more or less a split entry? Yes, it is a split entry. It is a split entry. Okay. So what are we doing for a handicap accessibility in the house then? Well, not my not my question. I mean to me, it's if I can get my mother in the house, then how do I get her up or down? I mean she's gotta go up the stairs or down the stairs. 
does she have the ability to do it that it sends her into a wider entry where you can help her up get full enough system and she is and then when she came in from the basement she had to be back twice as many and, and still and have go to down, deal with and that go down into into the basement and still have to deal with that platform to move around a again this is being proposed because the, the existing platform needs to be reconstructed we have a, a stairway going from the house to the street that's going to need land and we know that uh, so why are we going to you know you know redo this we we're thinking of the future it's not something that we have implemented at this moment it's for our future to be able to maintain in this home to make it so it can be So, you know, we're kind of thinking about the, the future as well. Uh, in terms of, if this were, this is unlike most of the applications that we get regarding residents that would like to cover their front steps. Most of the applications that come into us for this type of relief are some people that want to put a roof over that front existing platform. And that's not considered a new structure because you're not, you're, not, you're not requiring a new foundation as you are here. So those are, those are the typical uh, applications that we see where somebody just seeks to cover an existing platform. Uh, I see what you're trying to do. I, I understood what you were trying to do. You're gonna, you're gonna that, that current is, current existing doorway, you're going to blow that out. That's going to be a direct entryway into the house Open it up. once that new room, excuse me, essentially that you're looking to try to build uh, is that you're creating a new room. And when you're, and when you're creating a new room, uh, you know, we all, the board has concerns over what the future of this, the residences in this town are going to look like and how they're going to be used and I, I I understand and have some recent experience in dealing with trying to shape the bylaws that we have to interpret uh, keeping in mind what we think the future of our town is going to look like uh, and we also as a board are constrained by requirements and what we have in front of us now until and unless the town decides we need to change the bylaws to reflect these increasing needs for an aging population. And as a matter of fact, right now the town is taking steps to change these bylaws in many respects, uh, to take into account the vision of the town and its changing population in a changing age demographic. But we we're also, as a board, uh, we need to take into consideration, uh, I, I don't like to use the word precedent, that might be the wrong word. I don't think that we've ever had, at least in my tenure, an application for a variance like this. Can, can you remember anybody that's, that's ever petitioned the board for a variance regarding cover, regarding enclosing a front platform? Because as it exists, the front platform is not part of the residence, it's not part of the building. Mm -hmm. And so generally when somebody comes and asks, somebody petitions and asks us to cover it, it's not part of the building, so it's not increasing a non-conformity, the existing non-conformity. But where you're making it part of your structure, it raises it up a level, and the level of scrutiny goes up a little bit more. And I think we need to be, as a board, conscious of the fact that uh, we're, this application is asking to extend the residence into the nonconformity under the, under the four criteria for variance. Uh, and I think that's where your challenge lies here today. Uh, that said, I, I understand what you're, I understand what you're, what you're trying to do. The, the argument regarding making future plans for 
what you'd like to do in the future, to me, is valid from a lifestyle point of view, but not compelling from a, from a, a variance and an application point of view. Uh, that said, I, I, I don't have, I, I like your idea, I think it's very creative, I don't, but I, I don't know that the variance argument uh, is appropriate where you're creating a new structure in that nonconformity. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave my comments at, at that. Thank you, David. Uh, I'll comment on this. Uh, look, looking at the sketches, uh, I tend to agree with uh, maybe some of the comments of the board here. What I feel you're doing here is adding a additional room to your house here. Uh, this, this is fully insulated, four season room. Uh, it's gonna have a closet in it. Uh, you're extending your house now, whereas before it was just a, a, a step or a, or a stoop there and then steps. Uh, that was f uh, 14 point seven feet from the street line. Now your house, the, the face of the house is going to be 14 point seven feet from the street line on that. And I, I think that's uh, uh, quite a push on, on the variance request uh, on that. Uh, I, I think the, the your responses to the variance criteria, uh, could have certainly been a lot stronger there. Uh, you see generally the criteria, the first one is the more difficult one. You have to have a unique situation. Uh, a, and, and it generally lends itself to uh, the topographical features uh, or the soil conditions of your lot, why you have to have it built a certain way. And I, I don't see myself, uh, you know, how that first condition is met. And then in regards to the hardship, where you're talking, you, you're looking to the future. Well, I think a lot of people look to the future too, but we'll deal with the future when it comes if you needed handicap accessibility. We don't deal with something that you might need 10 years down the road, five years down the road or whatever. Uh, if you needed it at that point, we would deal with it then and, and not something that's in the future uh, on that. Uh, so that's, pretty much where, where I stand myself on that. Uh, so I think you maybe got an idea what the, how the board members feel on this. And I will go ahead and open this up to uh, public comment at this time. If anybody from the public would like to comment on this uh, uh, case, on this petition in front of us. Not hearing anybody from the public, I will close the public portion of this meeting. And uh, is there, further comments from the board members uh, or questions? And uh, I will then give them s some options then, but if you have any questions, uh, further yeah. questions, comments? The only comment I would make is that, you know, I, I'm extremely sensitive to your discussion and mm. comments about handicap accessibility, because I've had a sibling of mine in a wheelchair for almost 40 years and dealt with this issue of house accessibility. It's not an easy thing to deal with. And I'm really sensitive to what you're dealing with, okay? But if I looked at this document that, w that was in part of this package, to me, the proposed garage gives you many opportunities to deal with that issue. And that's, I'm saying that in the absence of knowing what the inside of your house looks like, okay? And I, you've alluded stairs here and there and everywhere else. Uh, but I think there's options to handicap accessibility that haven't been thought through here. And, uh, that's the only comment I would make at this time. Is it, is it possible? I did originally. Yeah, I had asked him about it, I think. And he had thought it was just a typical. No, I, I, I gave myself the garage the was already this, permitted. This, this yeah. Right, the garage was permitted. permitted. And this yeah. proposal is for an eight by eight. Addition, addition to the home. That yeah. was my first statement. Right. Okay. As far as um, accessibility, uh, ramps or anything like that leading to a structure are, are exempt from local zoning bylaws. So, right. so, the, but but structures are not. Right. So I mean, you know, if if need if if this proposed project needed a ramp going from the street to, to the structure, and, and that would also be encroaching 
in the front setback, but that would be allowed by right because of the handicap handicap laws. Right. The handicap laws don't uh, say that you can build a house closer right. to the street or, or an addition to it. So, yeah. so, uh, so, so the handicap ramps would not uh, uh, any problem in the future for anything, but they would be allowed by right. And I think um, David's comment about the number of people who have come in before asking for a cover for the platform in the front have been more or less the extent to which the board has um, given some relief uh, to individuals coming in in that fashion. But a full structure, um, I don't think with my tenure on the board I can ever remember a full structure coming in um, and giving a variance. Unless there was, I can remember one, um, that there was ledge all up front and there was no access um, except a very steep driveway. Um, but that, you drove, yeah. You drove by a, uh, I did. Out tonight. I did. Mm -hmm. You don't think our driveway is steep? <laughs> Not in comparison to the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> Uh, but I, I mean, the, the point was, there was no way for this individual to get from the from the street to the house. Um, that was a that was completely different. Uh, and all the cases that come before the board are unique in that that respect. Um, very few are the same. But the 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 variance criteria in 40A are very very specific. And as uh, Bob mentioned, uh, the first one is the most difficult to get past. Um, and you're not unique in that respect. As I said, looking at, I came up to look at the rest of the neighborhood because I had, I had ridden, I rode by it earlier in the week, but I couldn't remember for tonight what the rest of the neighborhood was. So that's why I went by. But uh, my point would be it, considering what David has mentioned what um, uh, Glenn has mentioned. Um, it's it's very difficult to 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 go forward um, on the criteria of the variance for an extension into the front yard setback. When, if you look again at the neighborhood, virtually everything is conforming. I don't see I I didn't see one house that I had questioned in my mind whether it did not meet the front setback. I don't know about the rest of them, but I did. Mm -hmm. Houses across the street from all, all each other? Does that have to be four houses? They're supposed to meet the setback. I mean, I they're not here tonight, so we, we don't know. Oh, we don't have plans in front of us. So, in, in the I'm, I'm just asking. You are. I, I don't think they do. <laughs> well, I, I, I have <laughs> snowballed the driveway. I, I know they do. I believe they're, they're probably 15 no. feet from the street. But, I mean, it'll go 50 years. work with uh, me we, we don't deal with what might happen in the future a year from now you might decide to sell the house and we've granted you a variance for a handicap and you're not even there anymore and you for something in the future no it when it becomes a necessity the handicap accessibility then you would become before the board for that The difference between the special permit and the variance. Special permits are, they could be time um, stamped, so to speak. Um, a variance is forever and for all. Once a variance is granted, it stands forever. Regardless, then you're not going to be there forever, nor are family members going to be there forever. It's not as if we're up in Maine, I shouldn't say Maine, we're not up <laughs> north country somewhere where generations upon generations are all in the same home um besides that i mean when the bylaws were put in up north <laughs> there, there wasn't any so yes i lived up in maine for seven years so I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right so i should have snuck yes i am <laughs> i am
Uh, Well, I, I, I think you, you've, we've gone through the board members. You get a flavor of the way I think each board member feels about this particular case. Uh, if a motion were made tonight, it would be a motion uh, to grant the variance, and then we'd vote on that. You would uh, require four uh, members to vote in your favor for that variance to pass. Uh, so you, we could proceed tonight with a vote. You could ask for a continuation to uh, possibly look at some other architectural variations that you may want to do or something to that effect. Uh, I don't know what more you could do. Uh, another option is you could withdraw your request for the variance without prejudice. If we vote tonight, you have, it's two years before you could come back with a new proposal on this particular uh, entryway and step into your house. You could not come back and say, next uh, six months from now, and say, well, I want to do this now. No, we voted and you can't do it. So you'd have to wait two years then. Uh, if we withdraw without prejudice, you could come back in six months with a new plan or something to that effect. So those basically you have three options tonight. We could vote, you could ask for a continuation, or you could withdraw without prejudice. Uh, would you like a couple of minutes to discuss it in private? If sure. you, you could you know, discuss it out in private, out in the uh, hallway there, and we could grant you a few minutes for that. Okay. okay. That's great. Thank you. Sure. How did your presentation go? Which one? <laughs> to the select board. Oh, one, that went well. That went well. In fact, uh, the articles for the September warrant have been drafted and either have been proposed or are about to be proposed by the CPDC, which is a prerequisite for, the, for them being placed on the warrant. Mm -hmm. medical marijuana, removal of the uh, wetlands protection district, and a couple of reorganizations of, of sections and deletions of sections uh, are being proposed for the September 29 town meeting. Um, see if we can get some of the low-hanging fruit. Well, medical marijuana is not low-hanging fruit, but the other mm. sort of administrative deletions and reorganizations to the front end of the bylaw being uh, are going to be covered in the special September town meeting. Almost there. I was going to say, it sounds like you're very yeah. close. Still a couple meetings before we, well, a few meetings, before we finalize the, um, the, the revisions Bodies. for the, uh, for the November town meeting, but we've got a little, little time. Not a lot, but a little. I, I think the presentation to the, to the selectmen on July, that was July 15th. That went very well. Gene, Gene Delios did the, uh, made the presentation. It was, it went, I think it went extremely well. Extremely well. seeing um, shots of the individual that sits on right from your seat with uh, conservation and with planning.
I didn't realize there was such a method to that madness, <laughs> Maureen. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll call the meeting uh, back Sorry. tomorrow. We've had a small recess. Yes, uh, have you have you decided how you'd like us to proceed here? Okay. Uh, do we need to fill out a form on that, Maureen? Not for withdrawal, just a motion. I thought there was a no. Okay. Just a motion. A motion. Okay, so you're requesting to withdraw without prejudice. Uh, I would uh, take a uh, motion from a board member on that request. I'll make the motion to uh, accept the petitioner's request for withdrawal without prejudice uh, for case 14 16. Second. A second. Uh, any further comment? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Who uh, was the second? John Durima. I'll just join in as well. Okay. There's uh, no further. Uh, Comment. Uh, all those in favor of the motion? Raise your hand. Thank you. Let the uh, minute show is 500. Uh, honoring the petitioner's request to withdraw without prejudice. Thank you. Thank you for your time and your patience. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to write the first one up. Thank you so much. So I will write the second one up, a brief one on the withdrawal without prejudice. Okay. Need to make a motion for uh, these minutes to be approved. Uh, we don't have we don't have a set in front of us to review, so I'm guessing we should do. You so we had a, we had a final set. Right. Tonight. Yeah. All right. Hold on. All right. Yeah, we do. <laughs> right. Well, Mr. We have no, we a monitor. Monitor. Yeah. All right. Or I buried them somewhere. I missed them, or I buried them somewhere. That's that's usually my ammo. Oh, you know where they probably are. Okay. Let me just make underneath. I got him. I got him. Oppose with print. Here we go. Let me see. Here. <coughs> Here we go. Okay. My comments seem to have been. Incorporated. I, I had sent those in to uh, Maureen. I think the other board members just made the same one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm all set with uh, the final. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of the August 7th, 2014 DBA meeting. Second as written. Okay. We have a second from Mr. Jurema. Uh, all those. Right Dave. <laughs> All those in favor of uh, approving the uh, final draft of the minutes of 8714? Thank you, 500. Zero zero. Thank you. Uh, any other business uh, tonight? Just uh, anybody would like to bring up? Uh, if 
not, I would uh, accept the motion for adjournment. Moved. So moved by Sai, seconded by Kathleen. <laughs> and uh, we are adjourned for the evening. Thank Can you. We vote on it. Thank you, board members, for uh, attending tonight. Did we vote on the adjournment? We what? did. Oh, we did? I think we did, yeah, we did. Oh, all right. <laughs> I just was holding my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I didn't hear, I didn't hear, okay. I didn't hear vote. All right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think we did, it was five hands up. <laughs> so you was there, I missed it somewhere. <laughs> oh, I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate uh, everybody showing up tonight. So we have one uh, two weeks. Yeah, we yeah. have no, just one case right now. Just a continuance. No, uh, no, it's a new case. Oh, that's no, it's a new case. Yeah, the continuance is a month away. Yeah. And then we have one case a couple weeks from now. Yes. Yeah.